keeping Russia amid a clampdown on dissent and sanctions, making it increasingly isolated from the rest of the world. One of the few ways to do so is via train to Finland. Professor Konstantin Sonin at the University of Chicago estimates 200,000 Russians have left their native country since this war started. He joins us now to talk about the broader implications that this could have on Russia. Thank you, Professor, for joining us. And also, you left soon after the invasion, right? Hello, I, I was spending my sabbatical year at the University of Chicago. I, I was spending it in Moscow and decided to leave 10 days after the invasion started. How difficult was that for you to leave and why did you decide to leave? Okay, it, 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 was, it was not a big problem uh, for me to leave and actually none, no one is stopped from leaving Russia as of now. Um, and the reason was that in Russia, I'm, I was, I'm a sort of public intellectual, so I was writing newspaper columns and going to radio and independent TV shows. And by the time when I decided to leave, everything was closed. Mm. Literally, all these media were closed. Facebook was closed. Everything was closed. Radio and TV channel, all the independent channels were closed. So there was no reason to stay and the russian government have criminalized basically calling uh, the invasion a war and i didn't want to use other names for the war at any point did you fear for your life okay i, I didn't fear for my life i, I mostly feared for my uh, for my free, for freedom i think that uh, in the near future the russian government will impose restrictions on traveling abroad because too many uh, good professionals are living right now, so I decided that it's time to go back to Chicago. What about your comrades who are there who are opposed to this war? They do not support the war. What are they telling you? Are you communicating with them? Yeah, I communicate. Uh, I communicate to people. A lot of a lot of people uh, deleted their, their social media accounts or locked them down. The thing is that the Russian government criminalized uh, everything that's written on social media backwards. So you now could be prosecuted, and people are actually being prosecuted for their anti-war posts a week ago, or uh, a year ago, or two years ago. So. It's, it became extremely dangerous to express your opinion in Russia. I know that uh, there's almost like a mass exodus right now in Russia. People are fleeing. Where are they going and how are they leaving mostly? Okay, a, a lot of airspace is, is closed for Russian, for Russian uh, airlines. So most of people leave to Istanbul, Turkey, or to Yerevan, Armenia, or to Tbilisi, Georgia. Some people go on foot to Finland or Latvia or Estonia. That's basically where people, that's like the first step. And then they're looking for new jobs, basically new lives, because mm. the, their previous life is totally ruined. How difficult is it for those who cannot leave, for those who are staying, uh, especially with the sanctions being put on the Russians? You know, they can't use credit cards. They can't do a lot of things. And they're being told other things, like with the rally, uh, told it was a concert, and they all go there. Right. I, I mean, pe people in Russia, they're now used to live under like a constant information uh, bombardment. Basically, now all the media, all TV channels, this is only, uh, it's not only, uh, it's not just propaganda. It's like the daily, everything that you get is that Ukrainians are murderers, they're Nazis, they're, they're doing atrocities, and the Russian troop, Russian troops just saving peaceful people, which is like the opposite of the truth. So it's difficult. It's difficult just to live there. What does this war mean to the future of Russia? Uh, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm normally a very optimist, optimistic person. So when I was speaking to business forums or board of directors, I have always been on the positive side, but I do not see any good scenario for Russia. I could imagine a good scenario for Ukraine after all these horrible atrocities committed. I could imagine that the world community helps Ukraine to rebuild and find a new future. But for Russia, it's I, for the first time in my life, I fear that Russia as a country could cease to exist as a result of this. Wow. Do you have family there, Professor? Uh, no. Okay. My, my family in Chicago. All right. I, uh, our, our you know, thoughts go out to you and for all the people who do not support the war in Russia. Thank you so much for speaking with us today. Be safe. Be well. Thank you.